Hi everyone, this video is to teach you how to do a graph with a trend line so that you can get the slope for our respiration and photosynthesis lab. So I've imported some fake data that would indicate that carbon dioxide is being produced over time. So if I want to do a graph, I am first going to highlight all of the area that has data in it. I'm going to go up here to insert and come on over here to charts and I'll click that. And I'm going to come down to the scatter chart with straight lines and markers and click that. So here is my graph that shows the change in carbon dioxide production over time. Now the next thing I want to do is put in some axis labels because it's going to help us determine the units for our slope. So if I come on up here to add chart element and axis titles, I'm first going to do the primary horizontal axis. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to delete where it says axis title and I'm going to insert here that this is time and my unit is seconds. And then I want to go back up to add chart element, axis title, and I want to do my primary vertical. And again, I will click in here and remove the words axis title. And in this case, I'm going to put in PPM, which stands for parts per million carbon dioxide. Oops, I need to spell that right though. All right, so now I have access labels. You can see that this has a title that was based on the information I had put in. For this lab, for our class, we don't need a title. So I'm going to click on that title and I'm going to click delete. Normally all graphs have titles, but we're trying to simplify things just for this, for this lab. Now we want to put in our trend line. There's two ways you can get to the trend line formula on Excel. The first way is if I click on my line, do you see how it made little flowers out of the data points? Now I'm going to right click and then, whoops, I got to go back and click on my line, right click, and you see I come down here and it says add trend line. I'm going to click that and it's going to open up this window for all sorts of possibilities. I want to show you a different way to get to that other than right clicking on my line. I can go up here to add chart element and come down to trend line and then move all the way down to more trend line options and the same menu will open up. Now, as soon as it opens up, it will automatically put in a linear trend line. And that's the trend line we're going to use for this lab. For other graphs, you might choose other trend lines, but please choose a linear trend line for this graph for my class. The next thing we want is we want to have the formula for the line so that we can get the slope. So if I come down here and I click the box that says display equation on the chart, that's going to give me the equation for my line in the form of y equals mx plus b, where y is the y-intercept, x is the x-intercept, and this m, this number in front of the x, is the slope. So what I want you to do is to record the slope in your data table with two decimal places. So for this case, I would write down the slope is 4.40. What are the units going to be of that slope? Well, it's going to be in parts per million per second. So you would be right PPM over seconds. Now, because in this graph, your graphs for this lab, you're going to have multiple lines on one graph and it can get a bit messy to have all these trend lines and all these formulas on the graph. So for this graph, I want you now that you have the data for the rate for the slope, I want you to remove it from your graph. So I'm gonna click on that formula and I'm gonna hit delete and that's going to go away. But how do I get rid of the trend line? Because again, if your trend line is vastly different from your curve and you have multiple curves on one graph, it can get very messy and difficult to read. So I'm going to go back up here to add chart element and trend line, I'm gonna click none and that's going to get rid of my trend line. I already have the information I wanted from my trend line, so this is going to give me a much cleaner graph. So that's how you do the graph for our respiration and photosynthesis lab.